Welcome to Sung Jung Nung. Sung Jung Nung is the home of two royal tombs. Sung Jung, which is the ninth king of the Joseon dynasty, and his second son, Jung Jung, which was the 11th king. Both them and their wives are buried here at this holy site in the middle of Seoul. The first thing you pass through at Sung Jung Nung is a large red gate, which you can start seeing behind me. It is colored that way and denotes that this is a holy and reverent place. At the top of the gate is the Taeguk, or the Korean Yin Yang sign. Leading up from the gate is a special two-tiered path. The lower path is for the living, and the higher or elevated path is for the spirits of the departed kings. Now at the end of the path is this building, which is for sacrificial rites. To this day, about twice a year, inhabitants of Seoul bring food offerings to Songjong. It's actually here on this table behind me that the offerings are laid. Now we're here at the actual Selerong tomb, and it's divided into numerous areas. This low level first area is the military area, and you can see stone statues of military leaders on either side with strong horses. They are smiling and have swords reflecting their stature. The next area is for uh, the king's civil responsibility, uh, prefects and educators with their strong horses, and this lantern symbolizing enlightenment and knowledge because King Sung Jung was very adamant about education. Now, behind me on the highest level is where the king actually is buried and is the royal area. Behind the lantern is a table that actually covers the entrance to the tomb. These pillars on either side have small holes in them that were designed to take in the spirit of the departed king. You see, down below at the sacrificial area, when the king died, his body and soul separated. Here at the tomb, the holes gather in the spirit and then reunite with the body underneath as they go into the tomb. The tomb itself is a 12-sided structure representing the 12 different directions of Asian cultures similar to the Chinese zodiac. The king is buried from north to south and is really quite amazing. When the Japanese came here in 1952, they actually couldn't get in through the original entrance and had to dig underground and then took out the king that way. They did burn down this structure and was subsequently rebuilt after the Japanese were kicked out. On the back side, on the north side of the tomb, are alternating sheep and tigers designed to keep evil spirits away and also to protect the king. I've also been informed that this year, UNESCO will designate this place as a World Heritage Site. Now, King Sung Jung is widely regarded as one of the greatest kings during the Joseon Dynasty. And as I mentioned before, he published a lot of books since he was so big on education but his probably most famous and long-lasting legacy has been the hunguk, or the tendency to allow for self-rule. It's a practice that is actually still in Korean government today. The second tomb is Jongnung the home of the 11th king of the Joseon dynasty, Jung Jung. Now, unfortunately, you can't get access to the actual tomb site. It's actually roped off, but the structure is the same as Seoyoung. You have this two-pathed area leading up to the sacrificial right building behind me. The elevated path to my right, your left, is for the departed spirit of the king, and the lower path for those of us in the living world. The sacrifices were, bef were performed behind me, and then up on top at the actual tomb area, you have the same structures. 
the three areas for the military, civil, and royal areas, and the same type of royal tomb. Same red gate in Teguk, and it's really, really special. I hope, hopefully you've enjoyed this tour of the tombs. We'll see you next time.